cool. I got some cool uh, lights coming up over my head. Do you see them? We got some yellow and we've got some red. It's very nice. Hi everybody. Welcome to Free Voice Lessons with Melissa. I'm gonna get going here today. I hear Buckley crying, but we're gonna leave him outside. <clears throat> Just so you guys know, over the last few days, I have been on vocal rest just a little bit because my voice has been a bit tired so I'm trying to be light on it. Anyway, today we are gonna talk about a singer. <laughs> Guys, remember how unfancy my setup is? Don't be offended, this is just, I'm always on the move, right? So I try to make things as accessible as I can but you know, I'm also a busy lady. I don't have any fancy setup to do my lessons so I'm just gonna put him right back here. Tracy Joe, you had asked me about this singer. I'm Josh from Greta Van Fleet. You were asking me if he was pushing specifically and so I thought I would talk about that today now if you guys don't know Greta Van Fleet they're a big rock band right now he has got that really bright epic rock voice everybody is is a big fan of this band right now so we're gonna talk about it a little bit like I always do I'm just gonna tell you what I hear specifically what we're listening to and again if I'm clearing my throat I apologize I've got some gunk still but it's feeling better today Ding! here we go so this is Greta Van Fleet. This song is called Black Smoke Rising. It's a really bright voice, right? And he's got fun clothes on. Look at this. Let's get into more singing here. First things first, if you are actually paying attention to his face, there's very minimal movement when he is placing that sound where he's placing it. Meaning he's just kind of talking. There's not a whole lot changing on his face. And one thing I will say is there's a lot of focus right here. Now, we've talked about this space before. If you guys remember, I've told you before in other previous lessons, I'm gonna place the phone back here, that a lot of teachers and a lot of choir teachers and vocal directors and things like that will call this and refer to it as the mask when it comes to singing because for singers this is a place of heavy resonance for us we use that space to get our sound to travel and get brighter so that difference between like a Disney sound a Disney character you know I like to always do whistle while you work it's not a heavy sound right those Disney singers tend to be nice and forward it's almost like they sound a little naive all the time ah oh, it's that nice forward bright spot now he's kind of using that almost like a Vince Neil would use it like <laughs> different kind of voice right but it's that bright nice forward placement yes let's keep going I'm gonna go back to kind of the beginning of this performance though if you notice he's got this ho oh, oh, ho oh, oh, ho oh, oh. ho ho Let's go back to that. I want you to kind of see this placement. Okay, that, guys, my voice is not pretty, so I really do apologize that I can't give the best examples. He's really, yeah, yeah. And then once he gets the sound there, it's very much sitting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's kind of up there. It's this really bright kind of thrown forward place. He's not doing a whole lot with his face. Although you will notice that he almost goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost this forward flick of that sound. Look at the placement he gets in his face when he does that. Body is not moving a lot. It's almost like it's stretching up higher, right? There's not a lot of breath. It's almost like he's just lifting the palate a little bit higher to get it to move, but it's not like he's going, yeah! Is there a lot of grit? Not really. I don't hear a whole lot of grit or restriction, but I hear a lot of eh. Yeah! It's almost like this lifted eh sort of position. Does that make sense? Yeah? Let's keep going. Rising Toad So there was a little tension right in there When you did that little thing there was a little bit of tension it was a little clunky but if you'll notice Toad that was nice and long and open He's 
doing a lot of mechanical things kind of up in that palate with his tongue and with his jaw. That's where his tension is. I, I can't even quite understand what he's saying right there. Hold on one second. Told I can really hear that part. It's a new way. It's a new way. It's kind of like, it's a new way. It's really in the jaw there. Do you kind of see what I'm talking about? But it's almost like he's getting those words to articulate a certain way, nice and bright and forward. So he can just sort of put them out there. It's very kind of put right in here in his mouth. Does it make sense? A lot of that movement is happening right up in his mouth. But do you think he misses notes and sings out of his range sometimes? Well, here's what I really think. I really think that this voice, he has spent time to get it to sound like this. Again, I don't know what he sounded like when he was 10 or 15 or any of those things, but this is a very calculated sound, meaning he has spent time figuring out how to place that stuff. He's not singing super loud or super heavy, yeah? It's not a heavy voice, it's not. It's not a super loud voice. Does he spread? Now what do I mean by spread? I mean actually sort of ha, ha, That is a spread position. You know, rising. He's trying to keep it nice and bright and forward. What I mean though is that he's not going into the back of his throat all the time. He really has to rely on brightness to keep that sound moving how it's moving. You know, again, if I'm referencing like Motley Crue, it's that same girls, 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 that sort of talking bright, keeping it very girls, girls. It's very kind of screamy and just thrown up there sometimes and it's very spread. <coughs> Should not be doing that with my chords. <laughs> But you know what I mean? It's a spread sound. It's very horizontal. It's very bright for the sake of getting up to those screamy, pitchy notes. But what I think you mean by out of his range is just sort of when it gets to that pingy kind of horizontal, I almost call it a tinny sound. Tinny, like you're in a tin can, kind of tinny sounding. Yeah. But he's really asking his chords to stretch to get into those bright positions, but he can also get that to happen by originating the sound with a lot of diction and a lot of kind of sue on better deal. It's kind of an over accentuating of certain sounds in his words that he's using. Let's listen to something else. When it's down up and cold, he's not even, when he does that, when it's down up, he's not even opening that sound. So he's not going, if he's saying like crazy, it's not open. He's not opening his mouth very much. It's very calculated, kind of right like this, you know? <laughs> but I'm sort of just talking to do that. But I'm imitating, whoa, he's kind of doing a yodely thing to make that happen. Whoa, when he does that sound, it's, it's really just, if you think of literally Tarzan, oh, that kind of wiggle, he's creating that when he does that oh. Because <laughs> I've been on vocal rest, my chords are a little puffy still. That means I've got drainage, I've got stuff in my ears kind of dripping onto my chords, making them a little inflamed. So when I even do that, oh, 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 like that doesn't feel good in my chords. You are asking your chords to flip, you know? Can that style be damaging to his chords over time? Well, it really just depends. I think that really depends on how he achieves this brightness. I don't know what his vocal routine is. I'm not sure if he warms up. A lot of singers to get bright, they'll like ee, and they'll just make e sounds do that kind of stuff. I don't know what his vocal routine is. I'm assuming he does certain things to get that kind of space. I'm assuming he really does something to feel that brightness in his voice because he's asking for it all the time. He relies on that. If his chords were super inflamed, they may need not even want to go up to those positions. Does that make sense? The whole concept here is that some singer's placement is just naturally more bright. Maybe for them it feels more normal to just sit up in that type of position. Okay, that was a little yell. So he literally went, you're the one I need. Did you see the transition between those two different sounds? Look at this. 
Do you see how his tongue's all weird? His tongue's all weird and flat. Watch that again. So just ta ta. I feel like that grit, like it is for me, is coming from his nasal passage, and it's grinding at the back of his cords. He's doing that by creating a horizontal space. So again. Stand your, stand your. It's almost like a little ha he's doing with the back of his throat to create that. But his face is pretty calm. See how much he's hiking up in the back? Yes, that kind of stuff is a little bit damaging. It's a little bit irritating in the back of the throat because his tongue is tense because his jaw is now tense, yes? Can it damage his voice over time? Sure, if he's not figuring out how to vocalize through that a little bit. And if his cords get irritated by that, what is he doing to make that feel a little bit more natural in his own voice? Let's listen to a little more and then we're done, guys. You're the one, you're the one. It's a very bright sound. And then he literally goes, need. You see his mouth? Need. Then it really spreads. Yeah. Again, to get that brightness, he is lifting his tongue a bit. Eh, eh. It's more that sound. As opposed to, yeah, yeah. More open, more space. Yeah. It's very lifted in the tongue. So is there tension to get this sound? A little bit. Yeah. Is he probably used to some of those tensions because he sort of trained himself to create that? Yeah. <laughs> Could that be tiring over time? Sure. But again, that's really based on his own discipline. There are singers that use tension and their voices somehow manage to stick around, right? He's also, when he puts his tongue out like that, he's trying to release some of that tension a little bit because he's trying to not pull it all the way back into his throat, if that makes sense. But he's still using tension to create some of that brightness. But the one thing he's doing that I think is really in his favor is that he's not super loud all the time. It's not the loudest voice. He's getting on that mic to also create some of that. Let's go a little bit further. Me, me, he does a lot of yodely stuff. Me, again, that's just the chords in a position letting go and then kind of reconnecting them again. But he's keeping his face calm. He's allowing them down here. Me, me, it's almost like it's slipping into falsetto. Me, and then he's getting back into the weight of it. We can analyze what they're doing to create the sound. Last week we were talking about Johnny Cash and we were talking about, and I'm uploading that lesson onto YouTube today. He really spoke a lot. It's not such a contrived sound. This is more of a contrived sound to my ear. Meaning, I feel like this singer has really, his voice is probably naturally very bright, and then he has spent time figuring out how to make it sound like this in these songs. I mean, it's probably natural for him because he's probably a rock fan that grew up singing like those singers he loves so much. With that being said, it's a sound he's figured out how to create. I can tell by what's happening on his face that he has spent the time, especially when he's, oh, 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 oh. he's keeping that, oh, 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 oh. It's a very specific position that you can see him shaping on his face. I hope this makes sense. I hope you can see kind of what I'm talking about. This is such a throwback sort of band and it's super cool. He's definitely doing certain things that he knows is going to create a certain sound. And Tracy Joe, thanks for suggesting I talk about him because it's fun. It's a very interesting voice. And like I said, guys, we've done Amy Winehouse. We have done Johnny Cash. Now we just did Josh from Greta Van Fleet. I have a lot of other singers I'm gonna talk about. I will also start throwing in just some random other lessons like I was before, just talking about random parts of voice. But this is a great way to explain, especially to my rock pop singers that want to be able to like do certain things. Again, we can figure out how other singers create certain sounds based on what we see happening. If you're singing a song like this that has those O's, you don't really want to, oh, that's very theatrical sounding. But this sort of rock and that bright tone to the voice is not a warm sounding voice like you would hear on like the singer of Mumford and Sons, you know? It's not a warm sounding voice like that. It's a bright tone. Oh, 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 oh. It's that 
that bright sound. <laughs> I just sort of sound like a dying yodeler. It's so sad for me. All right, guys. <laughs> anyway, thanks, guys. I will talk to you next week. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this lesson talking about Josh's voice. If you have any questions, please message me. Bye.